Come gather round the campfire and hear our ghostly tales of chilling terrors, darkest woes, and anything that goes bump in the night. So cuddle up with your best friend or dare it alone. The darkness is closing in and spirits are calling your name. This is Fireside Phantoms. First, we should tell our guests or our listeners, our guests. I think we should tell our listeners. Be our guest. Be our guest. That Carol and I, throughout this season, have talked a lot about going somewhere. That's right. And doing something on Halloween, in which we swore to each other we would never do. Right. <laughs> well, guess what, you guys? We went somewhere. Well, we did. We did. In the spirit of Halloween, we went somewhere and we had a magical time. Carol, where did we go? We went to the magical month-long celebration, only we were there one day, <laughs> of a Halloween-themed festival celebration called Halloween Town. Halloween Town. In a little town in Oregon called St. Helens, they do a month-long Halloween um, celebration in October. For a couple of reasons, Carol, what are they? Well, Holly, I'm glad you asked. Located just 30 minutes northwest of Portland, <laughs> along the Columbia River, this picturesque place <laughs> is home to the 1998 Disney movie starring Debbie Reynolds, Debbie Reynolds. Kimberly Brown, Kimberly and Brown. Judith Hogue, Judith Ho Who? called, or Hogue, or Hog. Wait. Judith Ho or Hogue? Hogue with a G. <laughs> oh, yeah. Better better pronounce that with the G. I'm sure the Walt Disney Company won't be happy about no. it. No. Okay. Don't sue us. It's called Halloween Town Halloween after the movie. Halloween Town. And the movies are a set of four movies in this series, and they were all filmed right there in this little quaint village. Nice. It's not really a village. It is a town. It's a little town, though. It's a very cute little town. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this fabulous movie... Disney makes the best, don't they? They, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I was there for three years. I oh, saw come on now. behind the scenes of the mouse house, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Halloween Town is a series of four movies. The first one, Halloween Town, was released in 1998. And then Halloween Town 2, called Calabar's Revenge, was released in 2001. And Halloween High... In 2004, with the last one returning to Halloween Town in 2006. So by the series titles, you can guess it's more of a children's movie. But a lot of fans, um, a mothers of teens and kids, have grown up with these movies and yep. love them yep. quite, quite a bit. And this is where we went. And just a little synopsis of the first movie. It starts with 13-year-old Marnie Piper, played by Kimberly Brown, and her mother, Gwen Hogue, fighting over celebrating Halloween. Her younger sister, Sophie, played by Emily Roski, can't ever go trick-or-treating, and Marnie can't even visit a friend's house on Halloween for a harmless costume party. Their brother, Dylan, is a brown-noser nerd and always sides <laughs> with his mom and thinks Halloween is just plain silly. Yeah, he's a pretty kiss ass yeah. yeah. Now, Aggie, the grandmother who is played by Debbie Reynolds. Who's adorable. Yes, yeah, shows up for her annual visit and secretly tries to get the kids to learn of their former heritage and constantly is scolded by her daughter, the kid's mother, who is trying to protect her children from ever learning the truth that they come from a family of witches and that they are secretly witches. So cool. I wish I came from a family of witches. Wouldn't that be awesome? Be so cool. Sparking the children's imaginations by giving them a book called Halloween Town as she was tucking them into bed. Marnie, the older sister, noticed that there was a character in there who suspiciously looked like her. And as the grandma says goodnight to them, and goes back downstairs to say goodbye to the mother to return back home. The children were very curious, and eavesdropped on their grandmother, explaining to their mother that Marnie, who was the older sister, needed to start her training before her 13th birthday, or she would never be a witch. No, that's Tragedy. Horrible. That is terrible. 
So the story goes on to take place mainly back where the grandma lives because the kids sneak onto the bus without the grandma or mother knowing and end up in Halloween Town. Yay! Yay! And there are goblins, an evil mayor, and a spell on the town. The children defeat Calabar, the evil warlock, who wants to take over the mortal world and is bitter that the children's mother married a mortal non-warlock, rejecting him as he was her former boyfriend. (laughs) So that's the basic synopsis of the story. And I must say, Holly, Debbie Reynolds is the star of the show, in my opinion. She's adorable. She is the perfect grandma witch. She sure is. She's so cute. And she's in all of the movies. She's great. She's great. Now, I haven't watched the last movie. I've watched all of them up until that point. Mm -hmm. But I heard many who boycotted it because Disney decided to switch out Marnie with another actress. And the only explanation was that Kimberly Brown was too busy filming another movie. So they wouldn't wait for her to finish to Mm. start the fourth movie. Wow. And we were curious about this, weren't we, Holly? We 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 were having lunch at a pub. Uh, in the town and we asked our server yeah who didn't want to be recorded but she was adorable she was really she was really sweet and we asked her she liked the movies halloween town what'd she say she said she loved them yeah Yeah, she was a big fan of them growing up yeah she She was about the right age to Mm -hmm. be a kid when they came out right yeah she said that she didn't like the fourth movie and i asked her why and she said marnie yeah she didn't like the recasting of marnie right i think a lot of fans of the show did not I imagine them, it, it would be like trading out Hermione Granger after <laughs> you've watched sure. six of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. That's just blasphemy, yeah. in my opinion. Yes. So. It's very interesting that they made that decision um, because, you know, I've worked in Hollywood before and um, they know that the audience has connected to a certain actor in a certain part. So to trade them out it's a kind of a big deal to do that because they're kind of messing up their franchise so i have to wonder what was really going on there for her um if she maybe was being too demanding with her contract or they weren't willing to wait for her to get done with her other film well i I mean that seems a little bit strange to me i don't know yeah i tried to find anything online i couldn't really find anything decisively online and maybe um, it really was just a timing thing like if they had a certain deadline they wanted this movie to be out in time for halloween she wasn't going to be available in time for that to happen perhaps they had to move forward without her i don't know i have an idea on how we can find the ultimate answer to that question holly oh really what's that well i'll address this later at the end but Mm -hmm. i think we might might be able to consult the spirits oh and find out so you brought a ouija board no, oh God, no. I don't touch that evil. You want to do a seance? No, no holding hands for me during COVID. Okay. But you're close. Okay. I'll, I'll just say hotter, hotter, hotter. You're almost there, hotter, Holly. Hotter, so hot. You're almost there, Holly. Um, is it internet research? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's call a friend. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But We're going to call Walt Disney Studios and find we? out from one of the movie executives oh why they made that decision. That would be brilliant. That would be amazing. Except for it's too late to do that right yeah, now. Probably. I don't okay. know. I don't know anybody that works there anymore. So. <laughs> and they lie. They lied about Disneyland, so they might lie. They lie all the time. Yeah. So many liar, lies. Liar, liars. So many lies. I've heard that this beautiful Halloween town, and it is so, so cute it and is, adorable. It is cute. It's very cute. So they have like the town square with the big pumpkin that you see on the movie set. Carol took a ton of photos that I think she's going to post to Instagram. Yeah, That's right. So you guys can see what it looks like. And there's the cab with Benny the skeleton, mm-hmm. taxi driver. Yep. And we walked all around there. Um it was just like being in the movie, except for I didn't have a broom to ride, yeah. which was sad. <laughs> yeah, it was very cute. And you can tell that the town really embraces that they were the shooting location for this film. Oh, everyone's um, involved in oh, it. Oh, yeah. There's all sorts of little exhibits set up everywhere. There was a haunted hotel that Carol and I went through. That's right. Which was actually really pretty good, considering that they didn't have any actual monsters uh, dressed like people dressed as monsters and they're to pop out at you because of COVID. But the the uh, special effects were good. 
Um, there was yeah, some... they had these animatronic monsters yeah. that were amazing because you couldn't have real people in the haunted right. house because of the conditions with needing people to be spaced apart. Yes. Um, so nobody could be like jumping out at you or anything. But I found it to be one of the best haunted houses display wise. Right. I did that too. I agree. I've ever been in, especially because there was this one part, guys, where they had these glowing laser lights yes. that made you really unsteady on your feet. You felt like you were walking up a wall. It really fucked it, up your your orientation. It was yeah. su- such a trip. Yeah. Like a literal trip. I When we turned the corner into that room, I had to stop for a second because I wasn't sure what to do. Yeah, I couldn't see. I couldn't see my feet because the way the laser came at you, it hits you about waist high and it looks like you're going through a swamp. Yeah. And, but it goes up. So it looks like the further in you walk, the water's rising above your head and you can't see where no. you're going and it's disorientating. So you don't really know what you're doing. So I had to figure out, okay, I think I just walk straight and hope I don't run into anything because I can't tell. I mean, it was obvious to me, whoever put this together had a background in movies Probably. or special effects. Yeah. Um, and there was this one area where they did um, like the swamp gas yes. coming up and you felt like you were in this green swampy New Orleans. Orleans By type you situation. Yeah, I was waiting for the crocodiles yeah. to come out at me, but really, I think the smell and everything was just someone in front of us a yeah. few feet away, but they, it was still amazing. It was amazing. It was really cool. It was so cool. You know, and I know that some of these buildings are haunted. Yes. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the movie theater okay. that's there because I know that was featured also in Halloween Town. Right. Um, as you recall, those who are fans of the movie... Um, the grandma and the mother got frozen there under the spell of Calamar, the evil mayor. I remember. And, you know, they were just sitting there in the theater. And when we arrived, it was pretty crazy because it was showing on the billing. What do you call that? Oh, the uh, the billboard outside. The, billboard the marquee. Out- the the marquee. marquee. Yes, yes. Thank you. The marquee. Yeah. So it was showing in big letters that. Harry Potter's Prisoner <laughs> of Azkaban and Hocus Pocus were the yes. two movies Double they were feature. showing. Carol just about died. She was How so excited cool to see is that? that. I was like, Holly, you called in advance <laughs> and told them I was coming. I knew we we're celebrities. I'm like, and, here's the you know, uh, the movies I'm going to request that you put on the marquee for today. <laughs> thank you for doing that. I Who knew you had that poll with Disney? Car- Carol was so excited when she saw that. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, it's a Harry Potter movie and Hocus Pocus. I know. I'm like, it's meant to be. <laughs> Holly. What's surprising is that they didn't have Halloween Town films playing. I, I know they should have. There. Yeah. That was what I was yeah. thinking they should have had up I there. Know. But I guess they're not too into themselves. You know, it's well, like, let's not toot our own ho- our own horn. You know, maybe they have a deal with Disney because, you know, it wouldn't surprise me because walking around looking at some of the props that they had out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I a bet lot of you, money. Yeah. I bet you Disney probably gave them some leftover from the films or maybe created one and gave them, donated it to the town for mm-hmm. their celebration. So perhaps, because I believe Hocus Pocus is a Disney film, right? Oh, it is. Yeah. So perhaps Disney is like, yeah, we'll send you a Halloween movie every year to put in your little theater. I mean, maybe that's what they do. I'm not sure if their theater was technically open, but oh, I did smell I... the popcorn when we walked by. That's so right. It was. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that maybe Disney sends them a little movie every year for them to put in their theater as part of a good little public relations deal they have going on with this, the town of St. Helens. I don't know. Maybe. Well, hey, if you're in St. Helens and you know, let us know. Email that's us because right. we'd like to know about that. And uh, did you know, Holly, that this local theater is actually haunted? No, I did not. And not haunted by monsters from the movie set. Uh, people say that an old man, they can see an old man who sits in the balcony really watching the movies and they can hear him rocking back and forth in his chair is it lord voldemort how creepy is that (laughs) (laughs) it might be (laughs) they don't dare say his name holly but i just think that's crazy to have a haunted actual haunted theater in a haunted set of halloween town yeah that's cool it's really cool and they had all kinds of exhibits there, too. They had the Parade of Pumpkins. Yes, which was really cute. Um, I really liked all the buildings. When we went through them, they're kind of these older craftsman type buildings. They're, yeah, they're definitely old school, um, like Victorian age, I think. 
But I really loved that all the buildings had these rails, these metal rails yes. going up their staircases made for electric chairs. Yes. And the staircases were quite steep. Yeah. But yeah, you can tell that they had put these in to help the elderly population or whoever can't get up their staircases mm -hmm. with those old rails, those old rail chairs. And the chairs themselves and the rails looked really ancient too, like from the 60s or yeah. something. It kind of yeah. looked creepy. Yeah. Like I was waiting for like... Um, a haunted zombie to be like sitting in the chair or yeah. something. Well, this this town was actually established in 1840, so it's been there. I mean, and by 2040, it'll be 200 years. So wow. it's an it's an old town. Well, it's an old town by Pacific Northwest standards. For those of you listening on the East Coast, clearly it is or not Europe. old or Europe. Right. <laughs> clearly, you're like, please, 1840s, come on. But we to us, that's old. That is old. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, I was gonna say this weekend. And I, I don't know, like, so I read it on the website, and I'll be really upset if it was this weekend, and oh. we went, and we didn't encounter this. Okay. But it had advertised saying that two of the cast members from the movie was going to be there for a meet and greet. Oh, really? Luke, the bully goblin from okay. the first movie, who's this 13-year-old... Um, the red-headed guy? Yeah. Okay. He, he is like a goblin, and he was loyal to Calabar... Because he was given a spell to make him handsome, but later he redeemed himself by helping Marnie save Halloween Town. Right. He was going to be there, and he looks so different now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're so much older. They're they're like yeah. our age they're now. They're like adults. Yeah. Yeah. They're like adults. Well, maybe younger than us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then Dylan, the brother of Marnie and Sophie, was also said to be making an appearance. Really? Yeah. So oh, we shoot. missed out. Oh, yeah. We should have timed it better, I guess. And I heard that... Um, Debbie Reynolds actually was the one who helped start the tradition there. Oh, she was? I think so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think either she put, helped with money or helped with the ideas of, of getting it started. Oh, but nice. Somebody, I was reading on the comment board and somebody said, without Debbie Reynolds here, it's just not the yeah. same. I have to wonder if when she came up to film, if she ever brought Carrie Fisher with her. That would be awesome. Princess Leia's walking around in this little tiny Oregon well, town. Well, that makes sense why they had a sci-fi booth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? They had an aliens they exhibit. They had an aliens exhibit next to the Museum of Oddities. Right. Which was kind of clever and cute and creative. They had all these cute. funky little things they had collected and they made like little backstories. I liked the one, um, the elk who was dressed up in a business suit and they said he had a shop. And he was yes. running his business, but he got he got hunted down and shot by a hunter. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And then um, um, the alien exhibit was really cool, too. Yes. You can tell they put a lot of work into that stuff. They, they really did. They did. And, you know, I as, as we were walking around, I was just like, this is actually really amazing. And it did. To me, I was like, these people must have worked all year long yeah. to get this detail right. in everything right um but it was also sad because it was deserted there was hardly anybody there yeah i think that that is probably because we went kind of early in the day and covid mm -hmm. are those probably the two reasons i would guess but i i read a statistic saying that usually it draws up to ten thousand people on uh, yeah. a peak night in october so yeah. they really um they're really not going to have anything close to that this year yeah. but i mean that's you know also they're drawing steep criticism from people online who not only they think it's inappropriate to have it. Oh, that's too bad. But also because they feel that the ticket prices are, are just going up every year just considerably when it started out as a free event. Oh, really? So it's getting a lot of pushback okay. right now. It, okay. it used to be free, but now it's like $45 per person yeah. this year. Yeah. And people are saying, look, with COVID, give us a break. Right. Because yeah. like a lot of people are out of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and this for a family of four, yeah. that that's pretty steep. Right, right. I mean, this isn't Disneyland. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's true. It's not like we could get a week pass here. Yeah, yeah. it's true. <laughs> I know. They don't have any rides. Well, there was one ride that we didn't go on, and they had pony rides. I know. You wanted to ride the pony. I did, but I thought I probably would have gotten some weird looks if I tried to do that. <laughs> yeah. And we tried to get our fortune read, but... Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I had to leave early, and so poor Carol didn't get her fortune read. Or Holly. Holly or wanted me. to as well. Yeah, we wanted to both do it, but she... Had a line, and so we had a skedaddle out of there. Skedaddle, so, skedaddle. Yeah. It was not meant to be. I guess not. 
It was not in the cards. Not in the cards for us today. Which brings me to, to a special idea. Oh, okay. I think we should consult the cards oh. on the real reason Marnie was what? replaced. Really? That's a good idea, Carol. Let's do that. Okay, let's do it. You okay. do it with your deck. I'll do it with mine. So you guys, Carol and I both read the tarot tarot cards. Yeah. So Carol is suggesting that we do a reading about why Marnie, Marnie. was recast in Halloween Town. Because that's just bullshit in my opinion <laughs> yeah this is a um, bunch of crap so we're gonna do this real quick all right oh, just on. a three card spread really quick okay all right carol what'd you get okay so i got the ten of coins the three of spears or actually it's wands we're i'm i'm doing the game of thrones card yes. collection Carol's using the Game of dun, Thrones tarot dun, deck. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> because this is medieval shit when we're talking dum, about dum, Disney. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> uh, no. The Walt Disney Studio executives. Actually, Disney didn't produce Game of Thrones. Well, no, but they did produce Halloween Town. And we're no, that's talking true. about who gets to be uh, Marnie. So that's, that's like um, who gets yeah. to be the, the king of the Iron Throne. I should have done the Aladdin cards. Yeah. You... Oh, well. <laughs> this, I just went with my favorite. Okay. And then Three of Swords, which, oh. What did you get? Yep, I got the Three of Swords as well, Ooh. followed by the Knight of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles. I am using the Greek mythology deck, which is one of my favorites. It's a deck I learned on. Um, so thanks to my friend Andrew out there in the world for giving me this deck. Thanks, um, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. So do you want me to go first? Go first. All yeah, right. So it. I think because we've got the Ten of Coins, money was a big factor. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's a starting point yep. because I think probably Disney was like, you know what? We're going to lose a shit ton of money if we delay production. Right. Or he's like, you know, if we get a cheaper actor that's unknown, we don't have to pay Marnie big bucks because it's been her like fourth movie and yep. she's got a cult following. Yep. And we don't care. Yes. Um, we've got other movies we're concentrating on. Right. Um, so it could be that. Okay. Um, the three of wands is this guy is waiting for his ship to come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this particular card, it's, um, I forget the character. Do you remember this guy? Uh, I don't remember who that is. It's that Weasley uncle dude, right? Who what? like hit on the redhead. Hold on. Let's see. Sansa. Um, um, it's oh, the guy oh. that had the crush on Sansa's yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little finger. It's Little Finger. Is that Little Finger? And Little Finger standing on the shore waiting for his ship to come in. Are you sure it's Little Finger? I think it's Little Finger. It's Three of Spears. Let me Are you going to look it up? Here. Yeah. Just to be on the safe side that we're not giving people bad information. As like we do every episode, like we, we give every, them bad that's true. information. They should be used to it by now. They should be used to it. I mean, they know we're not a highbrow show. Come on. Um Okay, it's little finger. It's I'm just little, okay. going. I'm going for it. If <laughs> Let's you've just got stick with that, okay. If you've Let's got the if you've got the Game of Thrones cards and it isn't little finger, well, I'm sorry. I'm blind. <laughs> I'm just going for it. We're gonna say it's little finger. Yeah, we've it feels good. We've talked about how blind I am, and I guess Holly's following suit. You know, I yes, my so. eyes, my eyes sight is going to help. We, we can't help it. It's we're very intelligent people. We just can't read anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so okay it's little finger he's waiting for his ship to come yeah. in mm -hmm. so i think it's um he put his devious plans out in the world and he's waiting to see how things <laughs> progress so it's it's this it's the studio waiting for an answer trying to wait for her okay. to finish up uh -huh. and they're like this is bullshit but this is where it gets dark the three of swords yes because we know that's all about heartbreak yep heartbreak and agony so i and it can also mean um being emotionally traumatized so maybe maybe somebody got their heart broken on the set and didn't want to work with her anymore oh maybe spurned love uh, maybe or she's just um somebody got their feelings hurt and didn't didn't mm. like her anymore and yeah. so bad blood bad blood doesn't want to work with them anymore so here's what my take is because it's funny that you got those cards because they're very kind of similar to what i'm going to say All right. but the fact is you end with a three of swords and i begin with a three of yeah, swords interesting so to me when i looked at these cards i got three of swords nine of swords seven of pentacles the three of swords to me obviously is a heartbreak card mm -hmm. i think that disney probably came to her and said here's your offer it wasn't the offer she wanted. Right. She was disappointed by the offer and 
there was probably some negotiation back and forth and they could not make an agreement. And she eventually felt like they didn't value her to the extent that she wanted to be, to be valued. So she turned them down. She moved forward, nine of swords. She moved forward with her life. Um, what was your outcome card? Well, it's a seven of pentacles. So I think that there was some movement forward. We're going forward anyway with the production. Then seven of pentacles. I think there was another attempt for another negotiation mm -hmm. that did not come to pass. Um, so I think she was working on another film, which is what they said happened. She yeah. was busy with something else. And they were there was another offer extended. And I think that it was turned down. That's what I think. Ah, but she doesn't want to let down her fans by telling them she just wanted more money. Maybe. Clever. <clears throat> Clever because, yeah, she's very um, very mysterious about the whole right. thing. If you try and uh, look at what, you know, when people ask her, she goes, I don't know why they She might be under a gag order, me. too. She may That's not be true. able to talk about it. So That's true. <clears throat> that may be it as well. But, yeah, I think that there was probably contract negotiations. Yep. That could not get worked out. Well, that's boring, Holly. No, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was, was going to be like scandalous, mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know. She got pregnant on set. <laughs> <or something>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, if that happened, you and I would know about it because yeah. the cards would surely show us. That. Oh, it definitely would. So I Absolutely. hope that was a fun little <clears throat> treat for you guys. Yeah. So, Holly, tell us more about Halloween Town. So, the other interesting thing about Halloween Town is that it's actually St. Helens is another movie location for a much smaller film that many people have never heard of before. It's called Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It came out. Just this tiny little independent film. Just tiny, In and tiny. out of theaters real fast. No one saw it. Um, inconsequential. Inconsequential. Did nothing to, you know. Doesn't have vampires or werewolves. No, no vampires, no werewolves, no heartthrobs, nothing. <laughs> but no, St. Helens was also the shooting location for the movie Twilight. So Twilight, for those of you who are not aware, was shot all over the Portland area and actually also up into southwest Washington. Back in, I think it was 2007, 2008, I remember listening to the radio one morning on my way to work. I was working um, for another film company at this time in Portland, and I heard the guys on the radio talking about this book called Twilight Yeah, and um, how popular it was and that they were shooting it in Portland, and I was like, what is that? And so I bought the book, and I read it, and I was like, oh, this has got a... Um, kind of a, a strong hook to it like I can see where the teenage girl would really get into this right and I was kind of into it too I mean yeah. it's it's a fun fantasy um there's a great sexual tension in right. it right um and, and Edward's such a gentleman such in a, gentleman. a naughty bad boy way <laughs> <laughs> he's got all this power yet he uses his force for good like right he's you know it, it's it's just a really great teen romance film uh, a book right now i know it's not the best written book on the planet i've got friends who hate twilight and hate hate the fact that i like stephanie it. meyer was not the literary she, she was genius not. you thought she, she sat down to write this book because she wanted to pay off her minivan oh that was her whole thing hey well it was a good story and yeah you know if it's too highbrow it just is you know puts yeah. me to sleep right so she had this idea she had a dream about a vampire and a meadow and he was all sparkly and beautiful beautiful and kind of like the perfect Venus flytrap, if you will. And right. she was like, you know what? I'm going to write that down. And so she did. Found a publisher. They published it. And my God, it just blew up because she wrote a really strong emotional hook right. to her audience. And not only did she hook teenage girls, but she hooked their moms and beyond. So Me. She, I'm and, included. And she hooked Carol. I like the su supernatural element of it. I thought it was a fun story. I didn't really see much harm in it. I know it wasn't like a J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter written book. Like that mm -mm. book is written like it's lyrical. Whereas whereas um, Twilight, you can edit probably half the book out and not miss much of the story. Like there's a lot mm -hmm. of extra narration in there that doesn't need to be there in my opinion. But that's okay. I'm not trying to rip her book apart at all. I think it's great that she got so successful so fast. I think it's wonderful. So anyway, they said they were going to shoot this movie here. I actually had a friend who was like new people on the production and – She's like, do you want to go to the Twilight rap party? And I was like, nah. Because <laughs> at the time, I didn't really know it was going to be a big deal. And even if I did, I'm not sure I would have gone because I didn't know anybody there. So it would have been like kind of weird. So anyway, they shot this movie 
And then as the momentum built for it to be released into the stratosphere, it got bigger and bigger right. and bigger. And it just blew up. I don't know. It just blew into whatever it is that it became. But anyway, St. Helens was one of the key places where they shot, as well as in Portland. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Okay. They also shot over by my brother's house. At the time, he was living in a town called Carver, um, which is really close to where I live right now. It's probably 10 minutes from here. Right. Um, and so they just shot all over the place. And um, so the first place I want to talk about in St. Helens is Bella's house. So where Bella Swan with played, her father, yes, but played by uh, uh, Kristen Stewart, she plays Bella Swan, and her house is located in St. Helens. Um, Carol and I tried to drive by it, but um, the road was closed off, so we we didn't. But I've been by the house before, and you could see it from the street from a distance, but they allow you only to walk. Yeah, you can walk only walk the path. Up there. So, yeah. and it was um, looks just like it does in the film. So right. if you, you know, don't want to drive all the way to St. Helens, just watch Twilight. You'll see it. <laughs> you'll be like, yeah, yeah, there it's it is. There. It's, it's there. It's a real home. There it is. So the first film was the only film shot in Portland. The rest of it was shot like in Canada and oh, Vancouver. Really? And I think the last film was shot in like parts of Louisiana. So they, they use the same locations. But I think what they did is that they shot. I'm not sure, but I think they shot the locations and then they just superimposed them when they needed to into the new movies. I believe that's cool. how it went, and now I'm not entirely sure how they did it. But um, so, Bella's house is there. In the first film, um, she goes to a bookshop. Bella goes to a bookshop to look up a book on werewolves and vampires or something. Yes. So the name, the name of the bookshop is Thunderbird and Whale. That's also in St. Helens. The Bloated Toad, which is a restaurant that Edward, the sexy vampire who right. Bella is in love with, takes her to dinner. The Bloated Toad, that's also in St. Helens. Oh, and where's the prom dress shop? So there's a prom dress shop. It's actually in a hair salon that they redressed to be a dress shop. Oh, that's right. We thought we went in one, but that was just a vintage. It was just a vintage shop, but they actually have a hairdressing shop called the Petite Jolie, which is where they shot the dress scene where the girls are shopping for their prom dresses. And Bella's sitting in the window, and some of the guys walk by and knock on the window and wave at them. Uh, that's also in St. Helens. So there's um, a couple of things there. Um, so I always thought this part was really interesting is that Edward's house, which is this really cool, contemporary, modern looking home. Right. Sitting it back looks like in the an woods. Ikea home. Yeah, it does. Like everything is very clean and perfect Angular. lines and wood and glass and very modern looking. A termite's heaven. Yeah. And there they have it in the movie. It's placed back in these woods. You take this long right. drive down this curly driveway and you end up at this house. Well, that house is in downtown Portland. <gasps> and that's the no crazy way. part. Yeah, it's in it's on a cliff in downtown Portland. So if you drive up into the hills of northwest Portland, you go around a really steep um, like embankment up into this driveway, that's where that house sits. So it kind of has a view of the city. And to look at it in the movie, you're like, oh no, it's deep in the woods. But in real life, it's not. Because Portland has trees everywhere. Yes. So. There's woods like behind it and around it, but but the way they make it look in the movie is it's deep in the woods and it's not. It's right on the side of a cliff in Portland. Wow. So it's a really funny thing to see it in real life because you're like, that's clearly the house. But it's not at all the way in the context well, that it has in the film. That's awesome because it can kind of keep your location private if right. people can't yes. completely recognize and it. And they have signs up in front of these homes because they're people that live in these homes. And mm -hmm. they're like, basically, you know, we know that you're here to see the house. Please be respectful of our neighbors. Please don't park here. Please know this type of photography, you know, because they know they're living in those homes. They know that now forever they're going to be stalked by movie fans <laughs> essentially we still have people who come here to go to the goonies house in astoria oregon oh, which is yeah. on the coast mm -hmm. so it just never stops I and mean, people that are fans of these films will always come and go looking for them um so my brother like i said earlier lived he used to live in a little town called carver which is about 10 minutes from where i live now and um there's a really cool restaurant up on a cliff in Carver called Stone Cliff Inn. And I've been yes. there quite a few times. It's great. Right. Yeah, it's really good. And it's um, a beautiful setting. It's up on this cliff. There's there's trees all behind it. And then it overlooks like the Clackamas River. It's really pretty. Anyway, behind that restaurant is where they shoot the scene where Bella and Edward are um, 
basically confronting each other about their feelings. I believe it's a scene where he tells her, so the lion fell in love with the lamb. And there is a sign out there that says Twilight shooting location. And it shows some photos, behind the scene photos of the of the shooting of the scene. Oh, wow. Nice. So, yeah, you can go there and see it. Plus, down below in the park um, that's right down by the river, I think they shot something down there, too. I'm not entirely sure what they shot down there. But anyway, Twilight is a huge, huge theme for St. Helens as well. Um, I think Halloween Town might be a little bit bigger just because I think Disney, first of all, Halloween Town was shot there well before Twilight ever came to town. Right. And I think that Disney has really done a lot to kind of keep it going in that little town because it's so exciting for them to be the home of a, a, a you know, a good movie mm -hmm. or a movie franchise. But then, you know, Twilight's an even bigger movie franchise. So, yeah. So a little town like that. Yeah. I mean, they're profiting quite a bit off yeah. the movie yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, and I'm sure that they get plenty of people every year coming there from all over the world wanting to see either Halloween Town or Twilight or mm -hmm. both, you know. I was telling a lady I work with the other day about it and she goes, I go, yeah, bring your kids for Halloween Town and then you can stick around for Twilight. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. So anyway, um, one of the, um, you had mentioned that the theater in St. Helens is haunted. Well, there's also another bar that is haunted in St. Helens. It's called the Klondike Bar. Oh, I like that. In St. Helens, it's in an old yellow Victorian building. And there is um, reports that an altercation took place on the second floor and that, that altercation still haunts the floor. Like whatever, there's residual haunting of it on that second floor. Um, oh, wow. And investigators have, have also seen the coffee maker start by itself on video <laughs> and they've also been able to capture other worldly voices so i'm getting all of this from a website called only in your state and the title is the creepy small town in oregon with insane paranormal activity hey that's the website i used for it, mine is it yeah they have a lot of good stuff yeah on there. yeah so basically that's what it says they're catching other worldly voices there's an altercation that took place upstairs also um there's a female spirit that haunts the upstairs portion of the building. And it says here that she miscarried her child oh. and she's looking for her baby. So that's quite sad. That and then there's sad. a big old video. There's some guy post posted. He's a ghost hunter about his time spent in this building and what he experienced there. So we'll post a link to this so you guys can see it. There's the thing about um, the Columbia Theater that Carol talked about. And a giant picture of the thousands and thousands of people who show up for Halloween Town <laughs> every year um, in this tiny town. It looks pretty cool. So, yeah, if you guys are ever um, out here on in October and you want to go see where they shot Halloween Town and Twilight, definitely go check out St. Helens and check out all the fun, cool stuff they do for Halloween. Um also, go and check out Carver and downtown Portland for the other Twilight shooting locations that they did. The high school is actually not here. It's shot up in um, a town called Kalama, Washington, and they use Kalama High School for Forks High School. And that's up the road, I think, about 45 minutes, maybe an hour from here. But all of it is relatively close. So if you're a Twilight fan and you just want to come check things out, definitely do. So that's it for, for Twilight and Haunted St. Helens. And we went somewhere, you guys, and we did something. And, and we did exciting. it. And we weren't too scared. It was pretty cool because it was, it was daylight. Cool. Yeah. We might work up bravely to something else next year. That's true. But we want to wish you goodbye and thanks for yes. a great season. A great season. A great first so season. So Carol and I are going to take um, the months of November, December off. A, hi a hiatus. A little hiatus to take a break and, and we've got some, you know, new things we want to try next year. So um, we'll go ahead and see you guys in January. But thanks so much for listening and sticking with us this whole time and we hope you've enjoyed our stories and of course we will be bringing you more paranormal stories next year. We know we kind of ended it on an adventure Yes. Uh, not so much paranormal, but kind of a fun local adventure for right. um, just for shits and giggles for ourselves. That's right. And make your Christmas extra scary. Yes. Or whatever holiday you celebrate. Yes. Keep the spook in everything. Keep it or scary. Or creep it real, <laughs> as Holly would like to say. Keep it scary. Keep Creep it and, real. And um, be Stay. careful with your campfires. Rest in pieces. Or fireplaces. Campfires. Okay. Have us more and think of us. Peace out.
Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>